Hey, what's up, YouTubers and microgrinders out in from microgrinder.com? Back again with another video for our microgrinder.com YouTube channel. It's been quite a while since I've produced a video for the YouTube channel just because I've been so busy with other things in life, with my professional career, with everything else I have going on with poker. I just haven't had time to dedicate time to creating videos, but I have been playing. And I have been active, been coaching, and I have also have been posting on different forums, been working on my books and my classes and everything else. And I've also been creating IT classes and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to get back into creating more videos for the YouTube channel. And what I plan on doing today is first I want to talk about my different ranges for 6 Max. So I've been playing around with them. And I went and I developed out some pretty complex ranges based upon some training videos that I watched myself from some other coaches. And I broke those down into some simplistic starting ranges that we can focus on for open raising ranges, for calling ranges, and three betting ranges. Um, I didn't include squeezing ranges and over calling ranges and stuff like that. But I think this is a good starting point. So I want to take you through a quick walk through my ranges. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll put some live play in. And we'll test it out just playing some 5 and L zone. I'll load up a couple tables and we'll see how it goes. Um, it's not my preferred game because it's anonymous. And again, it's zone. I'm not a huge fan of it. But I want to try to get some hands in in a fairly quickly amount of time. And that's the easiest way rather than loading up some regular tables, rather than loading up maybe some tables on America Card Room and Bovado. We'll just do two tables a zone. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at these ranges that are up on the table. So I have basic opening ranges for under the gun all the way through small blind. And you'll notice that they're fairly conservative ranges. Um, I don't have the percentage marks in, unfortunately. I guess I could pull up Equilab and tell you what the percentage is. But overall, they kind of speak for themselves. So my under the gun range is fairly conservative. I'm not raising in deuces through fives because in my experience is that I end up check folding a lot, especially at the lower end of the micro stakes at 5 and L and 2 and L and 10 and L, especially on Bovada, is that people are calling stations and you're going to see lots of our cards. You're really going to flop a set. And so lots of times if you're raising in first in the pot with deuces through fives, you're going to be check folding. Um, especially when it goes multi-ways, which is quite common, especially on Bovada. And so for a percentage for my under-the-gun range, that is roughly 10%. Middle position, you'll notice that I loosen up a bit. I get to around 13%. I throw in some weaker suited aces, some weaker suited broadways. You'll notice that I keep king jack off and queen jack off of here because they're off suited. So, you know, I would prefer to play my suited hands over my unsuited hands because I have that flush capability. And I'm throwing pocket fives in. Still in middle position, I'm not opening deuces through fours because I think they're too weak. Again, we're going to be check folding, especially when we go multi ways. Cut off, we get to looking at Equilab, 22% approximately. And, you know, I think this is a decent range. A lot of people are going to say you need to open wider, but you'll notice I have all my suited aces in here. I go to ace nine offsuit. I got a lot of my broadways in here. I'm still not doing queen 10 off and jack 10 off. And I have all my pocket pairs. By the time we get to the cutoff, I have a fair amount of suited connectors and suited one gappers. Again, you'll notice I'm not doing any of my off suited because I want to stick with the suitedness for that chance to hit my flushes. Now, by the time that we get to the button, I am opening a fairly conservative range. Again, only 35%. You notice that other people are going to see I need to be opening all the way up to like king four suited and, and queen four suited and stuff like that. But I think that's silly, especially playing on sites like Bovada because positional advantage does go out the door when people are calling stations and you still need to have card advantage over them. But you'll notice that I'm opening up a fair amount of hands. I'm opening up all my aces. I'm opening up all my broadways. I am opening up some of my weaker suited kings, queens, and jacks. And then I have a couple, a few actually off suited, um, Suit off suited connectors. I have lots of suited connectors and suited one gappers, and so it's fairly decent range. Now, you'll take a look at my small blind range. This is the same thing as my cutoff range. I think it's fine. I actually did throw in a couple more hands, so I think the percentage on that's 24%. 
Um, and this is really going to be if you're playing on a site where you can use Poker Tracker 2 or, or Hold'em Manager 2. For your button range and your small button range, these are starting points. Actually, all these are starting points, but especially in late position, you need to look and see how often the blinds are folding to stills. If they're folding to like 70% or 60% or more, pretty much can open any two cards profitably because they're going to fold so often. So that's my opening range. And just remember, these are starting points. We can adjust them and tweak them accordingly based upon our HUD stats and the players that are at the table, depending upon how good they are or how bad they are, how much they're three betting us, how well they're defending their blinds, how squeeze happy they are, stuff like that. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at my open calling ranges. Again, this is a starting point. And you can break this down to a very complex type of calling ranges where you are saying, under the gun opens, what can I call in middle position, what can I call in cutoff, what can I call in button, what can I call in the small blind and the big blind and so forth, etc, etc. But I decided just to make this very conservative and make these starting points and it's just calling range based upon where the person is opening. So if somebody opens in under the gun, you'll notice that I have, I'm calling with just a few of my Broadway cards, my ace jack suited, my ace queen suited, king queen suited, ace queen off suit. Everything else is either a fold or a three bet up in here. And then also I am calling with a lot of my pocket pairs. Um, these pairs down here, these are very marginal, so these are going to be situational depending upon if I want to overcall or not. I'm typically not going to call with these in early position, but in later positions or if multiple people are calling, I'm going to call to set mine. You notice I have some of my suited connectors in here because we can make a lot of strong draws and nutted hands. So we have those in there as well. You notice that I have uh, suited connectors in a lot of my ranges. Um, now, if middle position is opening, again, we can call with a wider range. So we're throwing in some more of our suited broadways. We're starting to call with uh, most of our pairs and we are calling with more suited connectors. When cutoff opens, we are calling with a lot more of our Broadway cards. Again, all the pocket pairs. Uh, now, if we're in the blinds, we're going to be folding sometimes, especially with some of these smaller pocket pairs, or we're going to three be three betting them as a bluff. But, you know, we do have these in here because if you're in the big blind or if you're in the button, sometimes you just want to overcall. And again, some suited connectors in here as well. So again, this is very situational, especially when you're in the small blind because you want to be calling with a tighter range in the small blind because you're getting a worse price and you're out of position. Now once we get to the button, you'll notice how things tighten up and they tighten up because the only people calling are gonna be the small blind and the big blind because if the button's open raising, everybody else folded. Because we're out of position, we need to have a tighter range when we're out of position. And you'll notice that I have a lot of our pocket pairs in here. These ones down here are out because this is gonna be a three bet bluff or fold. And then a lot of our Broadway cards in here as well we can call, but we can also 3-bet these as well. So you'll notice when I go over my 3-betting range, we can 3-bet some of these hands as well, but we can call as well. And it all depends on how often the button is folding to 3-bets and how often they are stealing the blinds. Now when small blind open raises, this is what's going to be big blinds calling range. And again, this is dependent upon how often small blind is opening up in the small blind. And you'll notice it's a fairly wide range. So almost all of our Broadway cards, um, except for the ones we're going to 3-bet, and we can easily 3-bet Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack, Ace-10, King-Queen suited. Um, we can even 3-bet some of our weaker um, pocket pairs like pocket 9s, pocket 8s, and the lower ones as well as a bluff. And then we can overcall, you know, with tons of suited connectors because we're getting a great price. So that's the starting point for the open calling ranges. Let's take a look at our three betting ranges. And again, this is super conservative. Um, I do not believe that you have to get out of hand with your three betting at the micros. I think that it's counterproductive for beginning poker players. And so that's what I'm following here. Now, once you move up to 25 and L, 50 and L, and you are playing against more competent opponents that are defending their blinds, they are squeezing a lot. And you notice that everybody else is balancing their ranges a bit with bluffs then you're going to want to start to throw some bluffing in. But once you begin getting into 3-betting, I prefer to have people start off conservative and then start to open it up. So if somebody is raising under the gun, we can 3-bet aces and kings for value. We can 3-bet ace-king suited. We can throw in ace-king off sometimes as well. Sometimes we can flat. 
If somebody's open in middle position, we can 3-bet queens plus and ace-king. Both offsuit and suited, and sometimes we can throw a pocket jacks in there as well. Sometimes we can throw ace-queen suited in there, or ace-queen off as well. It all depends on how wide they're opening. And then for cutoff, you know, we open it up a bit more. We're 3-betting ace-queen plus, we're 3-betting jacks plus, and sometimes even pocket tens. And then for the button, again, widen it up a little more. Tens plus, ace jack plus, and then again, sometimes we can throw in ace ten suited, pocket nines, king queen suited, hands like that as well. If small blind is opening, we can three bet from the big blind with a really wide range. Pocket nines plus, ace jack plus, ace ten suited, king queen suited. Um, you know, lots of different hands we can three bet for value against the small blind open. And then I have some bluffs in here for bluff range, and I forgot to put in the small pocket pairs. Um, I actually need to fix that, and while I'm doing this right now, I'm going to throw that in there. And so for our 3-bit bluffing range, we can put in like pocket deuces, 3s, 4s, and, and maybe sometimes 5s. I'm just going to leave it at 4s. At we can do our suited connectors, and we can do some of our weak suited aces. Now, the question is, why am I composing my bluffing range this way? Well, I'll tell you why I'm doing it, and let me go ahead and, and copy in um, these bluff cards. So let me copy this over here, and let me just update this. And I know that this is going to look funky, but I'll get this fixed. Here we go. So you don't need to get out of control with rebut bluffs, but if you feel like bluffing sometimes, these are hands that you're going to want to bluff. And, and let me tell you why these are bluffs and why we would want to 3-bet these over something like Ace-10 suited or Ace-Jack offsuit or King-Queen offsuit or pocket 8s or pocket 7s. Um, with deuces through 4s, we typically want to 3-bet those because, again, we really don't have that much post-flop value with them because of the overcard aspect. So if we're out of position, or even if we're in position, typically you 3-bet these if you're in the blinds, but if you're out of position, somebody's still in your blinds, it's enticing as a beginning player to overcall, but you're going to be check folding a majority of the time because number one, overcards are going to come, and number two, you have a positional disadvantage being out of position. So it's easier just to 3-bet bluff with those because people are open with wide ranges in late position. They can't call your 3-bets, and you can take down their money pre-flop. Now, why the weak suited aces? Because they have blockers, so they reduce the probability that anybody has an ace-x type of a hand by 25%. And if you do get called by, say, pocket queens, jacks, or tens, they have post-flop playability if you flop an ace. And we want to play the suited ones. We want to three-bet the suited ones that ace-5 through ace-2 because, you number one, you can hit a flush. Number two, you can hit an ace versus, you know, queens, jacks, tens. And you can also hit the wheel. So you have lots of playability with these. Um, a lot of people are going to say you can also do the weaker kings. But because I can't put that straight in there, and it's more likely that somebody may call me with like a king, queen, queen, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket tens, those type of hands down here, then if an ace hits, I'm going to have more playability. And then we can also three beds as a bluff our suited connectors. So why would we be doing our suited connectors over something else like a ace ten off, an ace jack suit, an ace jack off, a king ten suited, those type of hands? Um, because if you get called, let's say we get called by ace queen or ace king off or pocket kings or pocket queens or king queen suited, these are going to have a lot more post flop equity than a weaker ace. Because if they flop an ace, then you're pretty much dead. Your hand cannot improve. But if you are up against a range up in here, then the cards that connect with them are not going to connect with you, and vice versa. But if they do hit, let's say somebody calls us with ace-queen off, if they do hit an ace, if it's something like an ace-jack-8 and you have 10-9 suited, then you have an open-end straight draw. Or if it's an ace uh Queen 10, you still have a straight draw with your 9 8, and vice versa. So, if you look at these lower ones as well, you have straight draws and you have flush draw capabilities. So, in terms of post flop equity, these are going to have a lot more post flop equity than some of these weaker cards up in here. And typically, that's why we don't 3 bet those that often because if you get if you 3 bet something like an ace 10 and you get called, you can be in a dominated spot and you have to tread the waters post flop if an ace or a 10 hits versus your opponent. 
So that's my ranges. Like I said, they're fairly basic. Um, there's really not much to them. You can definitely, you know, throw these in the Equilab. That's what I did. And let me pull this over. So here's my Equilab setup here, and you'll notice my ranges, opening ranges, calling ranges, and three bedding ranges. I have them all into here. And I put a lot of different ranges in here over the time from different series and courses that I've watched. But these, I think, are going to work out pretty well for me. Um, I just put these together a couple days ago, so I haven't really tried them more than one session. But we'll give it a go. We'll see how it's going to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to load up a couple zone tables and we'll be back in one second. Okay, so I have a couple of 5 and L zone tables up and running. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test out these ranges and see how well they work. Um, one thing that I've been experimenting with out of position in the blinds is instead of having a fairly wide calling range because I am getting decent pot odds, especially in the big blind. If I have a decent Broadway card, I'm three bet three betting instead instead of calling. So you'll see me do that. Um, pocket nines, standard open. If you do queen nine suited here, I'm just gonna fold. I know they're a bit deep, but I'm not. So you know it's not that great of a hand. I know I'm getting good pot odds. People are gonna say you should call, but you know what? I'm just gonna fold. Uh, this is a very interesting spot. I am going to be betting on the big side, especially because he's short stack. Um, I'm never folding here. There's so many draws, and that is a terrible current card. I am actually going to take a check call line, and if he jams, I just think we have to fold. Um, based upon the pot odds here, you know, I'm getting 33% pot odds, but I have... I only have about 20% equity chance of hitting my hand. Um, that's pretty horrendous. So we just have to make a hero fold. And that's what you have to do with the micro. Some people are just going to get stuck to their hand and be like, man, I have to call. I flopped a set. But when you know you're behind, that guy's never betting that turn without a straight. And when you know you're behind, there's no point in burning money. So you have to make those hero folds. So let me... Let me turn on. I know that you. it doesn't matter if you have a HUD up and running on zone, but for me, I want to take a look and see what my VPIP and preflop raise stats are going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on for me. There we go. So we'll just fold again. Um, just fold, be patient. A lot of your money is just going to be coming from showdown. This is a value oriented game. This is not the type of a game where you're going to be throwing out tons of bluffs. So I, I think that's a bit of a misnomer. I think that it works on tighter sites. When I mean by tighter sites, I mean sites with better players and nittier players. So sites like Poker Stars, um, where people are playing Zoom, you'll notice 5 and L plays drastically different than 5 and L zone. Uh, king queen suited this guy is opening 4x and if, if you take a look if I take a look at my range calling from a cutoff I can call with the king queen suited um, it's not in my three bet ranging but I'm just going to go ahead and fold because I know nothing about him he's making a 4x open I know you're going to say wow that's super nitty that's super tight but I'm just going to err to the side of caution because we're playing anonymous poker and I have positional disadvantage. He could easily have ace queen. He could have ace king. So I could be in a dominated spot lots of times. And there's really no point in in playing a very loose game. You can just sit back and wait for more premium hands because you're going to see a lot more hands per an hour when you play on zone. And I'm not sure why my HUD is not opening up over here. Enable HUD. Apply. 4-5 suited, we can open this on the button. I think it's a bit loose, but I am going to go ahead and open it because I think people are going to be folding a lot and they're not going to be defending the blinds that well. And as I say that, we get a call from this opponent. Um, you know, if this was a different card, if it was like a, an 8 or a deuce and it was a rainbow board texture, I think this would be fine to barrel on, but I don't think I'm going to get much folds. I think this hits a lot of his range and he has lots of draws. So we're just going to check, and we're just going to give up. Standard 3-bet here. Just get it in. And we'll just fold our 
a terrible flop for us. So at this point, I'm going to check. I think he has a lot of aces in his range, and if he doesn't have an ace, he's going to check back. So again, I'm going to check the turn, and we're checking for pot control. Pocket jacks on a 8-king-5 board. I am going to check back again. This is okay for checking here. I have to call getting that price. And again, I'm going to check. Um, when he bets the turn, I'm going to call once. When he bombs river here, I think he almost always has ace. And I have to be right only 25% of the time, so I am going to look him up. And he ends up hitting two pair with a jack seven in a three bet pot. Um, pocket jacks here, the straight got there, I think we have to fold. So I did not put him on a jack seven, and, and that's the thing with playing these games is that people just play crazy. You're going to get unlucky, and he hit you know, a very small amount of equity on that river. But you know what? Good for him. So I did not mean to check fold there. Uh, I didn't see that he opened limped. So unfortunately, cards are not running our way so far. Pocket jacks, pocket kings, a flop middle set. But you just have to be patient. Five six suited under the gun. I'm going to fold. So just make all the standard folds. So I just went on a, a fairly turbulent downswing where I felt like it was never going to end and um, I finally jumped out of it. It was so bad that I would be going to the river with something like a 92% or 80, 88% favorite where my opponent only had one to three outers and it seems like they always hit them. Um, people call me in three bet pots with jack tens and, and uh, 10 nines and, and hitting runner runners for flushes and straights and it's like man what is going on um a7 off in the small blind i am only going to be opening off a cutoff range so i am going to fold especially against a short stack um you know pocket aces all in pre-flop versus kings kings with flop set kings all in versus queens queens with flop a set i did have one hand where i had ace kings versus queens and we both flopped a set and he ended up hitting quads on the river uh, that was pretty sick but, you know, things like that were happening, kind of like things are happening in this session where, with the set, with flopping the set and um, just getting crushed with that turn card, which was, I wouldn't say crushed, but just a bad card. So pretty standard open blind versus blind. Uh, here, easy spot just to the barrel. Uh, Ace-9, I am not going to defend. We could throw in a 3-bet, but I'm not going to 3-bet. Uh, the 7, he could have a 7, but again, I'm just going to bet just over half pot size bet. And the six, um, I think I'm going to throw in a very small blocker bet on the river with my pair of nines here and hope he doesn't have trips. And it looks like he has trips, so it looks like everybody's getting lucky on me here. Um, he must have a seven. I can't see him raising such a large amount with anything but a seven. And I get a limp raise from this guy. He three bets me, so I'm just going to fold my ace five off. But I've noticed that, you know, in that downswing, almost all my variants and all my bad beats happen on zone. So I am a bit cautious and a big, bit skeptical about zone. So when he opens, I can call. Um, I think it's a bit marginal. I could also 3-bet, but it's not suited. So I'm not going to 3-bet. I'm not going to defend in the big blind. So I'm just a fold. Ten eight off, a fold. 7-9 is a fold as well. Nine four again, a fold. So just making all the standard folds. Just trying to tread water, trying to get one of my big hands to hold up, and, you know, we'll see what happens. 
Ace two soft, this is a fold in the cutoff. Again, pocket ace is perfect. We are going to three bet our aces, pretty standard. No point in slow playing aces, and of course, when we get aces, it doesn't call the three bet. Queen eight, we're not defending. Again, too weak, he only has a half stack, so it's a fold. A6 off is a fold. And the cutoff for my offsuited aces, I'm only opening up down to ace nine off. Five, six off, this is gonna be check fold, not looking to defend this to a raise. So sorry if you hear the ruffling around, that's just me moving my papers around, just making sure that I'm following my ranges. Um, again, see this is something that a beginning player would call with. This is just a terrible call versus an under the gun opening range. So King-10 suited, while it looks pretty, it's not a good hand. So middle position opens, pocket tens, and I think this is a good squeeze pot. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze here because we are playing speed poker and people tend to overfold. You could limp behind, but I'm just trying to see how well my aggressiveness will work and see if this guy will call. And I think we have to call it off. He has a capped range by calling there. And we get in with the best hand. That's all that matters. He does hit his king. We don't hold up, but. Um, the fact that we got all in with the you know equity favorite of I think like 52% that's all that matters but when you're not running good you're not running good I think we're something like one for four one for five with pocket pairs so far with jacks kings aces tens king queen off gonna be a standard open is five off this is a fold A check suited, standard open under the gun. And this is not a good flop for us against three opponents. People like to call with aces, so with middle pair, we're just checking here. Uh, I, I forgot to say this is Friday on Bavada, so the games are super fishy. So you're going to see people doing a lot of silly things that don't make any sense. And that's why you saw what happened there with the um, the ace king off where he just flatted and then he decided to jam. Here when it checks around, I would assume one of these players has an ace. So I am going to go ahead and fire out a bit of a protection bet here. We don't have to bet that much, just over a half pot size bet. I think it is possible somebody could have an ace, but I would assume that one of these players bet the flop with an ace. And when he calls here on the turn, it's very likely that he has an ace where he picked up the wheel draw or a backdoor flush draw. And he could have something like a jack-10 as well, or a king-jack or a king-10, that type of a hand where he wants to see the river. Um, and then the ace hits on the river. I think this is a pretty good card for us because it's harder for him to have an ace. So again, I'm going to put out a small thin value bet. and. Try to get value from smaller pocket pairs, but if he raises me, I mean, he must have trips. And if he does raise, then we're just running into the top of everybody's range this session. But he calls, so it works out. Happy days for us, finally went in a pot, and let's see what we got him to call us down with. And for some reason, it's not loading up. Uh, middle position, ace five suited, fold. Got him to call me down with a busted flush draw. So he had the king eight of spades, and he called me down with a king high. Jack ten off versus a button. At this point in time, I don't think it's strong enough to raise, but I'm not going to be folding here. So with the jack-10 off, while I don't love calling here, I am going to call getting decent pot odds. I know they're both a half stack, um, but I think I'm getting decent pot odds to hit a nutted hand. Flop isn't that great. We have a gutter. I mean, that gives us four outs. Uh, we do hit the jack. 
Um, at this point in time, I think we could have the best hand. So, but I am only going to bet half pot. I think you could have the potential jack as well, but it's just really hard to say. I think if he had any sort of jack hand where he had any sort of draw, I think he would have called. I think he would actually let out on the flop. Um, you know, jack nine, jack ten, jack king, queen jack. I mean, he can't have queen jack because he couldn't have had the queen. So I think it's pretty safe to say that I had the best hand there. A sign off, that's a fold. 10 to 5, that's a fold. Ace four off, that's a fold as well. A six off on the button, I will open this up. But I am not going to call, so that's just a fold. King seven off on the button. Will I open this on the button? Let me take the ranges that I put together. I only have down the king nine off, so based upon the new ranges I put together, that's a fold. Middle position, that's a fold as well. So I'm not even gonna wait, I'm just gonna fold. Just stick to the ranges that I put together on paper and then I have up here. So this is one of those interesting spots where I think people want to defend. Um, we have a cutoff open. We have queen jack offsuit. Um, this is a tough spot because this opponent is calling. We are getting good pot odds. I don't like to overcall. I don't want to squeeze. I am going to call, but I'm not happy about it. And the only reason I called was decent pot odds. And, you know, queen jack off, I think it's okay. When he leads out, we're just folding here. And pocket threes, I don't see a point in raising here because, again, we're just set mining. So I'm just going to check and try to hit a three and just give up. So that's the one thing with ISO raising too as well is that you have to consider your post-flop playability. I see lots of people, they just like to ISO raise when they see somebody limp. And more so in position than when they're out of position. Um, when you're out of position, you have to be more conservative than when you're in position. But I see some people doing it insanely light in position with no plan whatsoever post-flop. I mean, something like a king four offsuit just because they see a fish limping. Um, but you have to consider your post-flop playability against the calling station. You can't just isolate any two cards because if they're a calling station and they're not folding, then you're just going to barrel off a lot of your money when they call you down and wonder why they didn't fold. So I think I'll make this video a total of 45 minutes. Right now we're at 33. Um, in terms of the hands, I've gotten one around 90 hands in. King Jack, standard open on the button. Good flop for us. get called by lots of worst cards um, I again I'm going to barrel the turn because I have the up down straight draw as well um, and then on the river I don't think see how I'm gonna get lots of worse hands to fold so I'm just gonna check for showdown value and we chop it Ace queen standard open, king eight off, that's a fold. And when I open king jack there, that's one of those spots where you see where the opponent called me down. I, I think that's a bit marginal. I think he should throw you that bet there. Um, so we have button opening. What's my calling range? And I'm going to take a look. You know, button opens, ace 10 off. It's outside my calling range. I think it's a bit too weak. I think I need to 3-bet that or fold. And I'm not going to be 3-betting ace-10 off.
again, here, somebody might just ISO raise because he's a fish here, but what's the point? 7-4 offsuit. So, you know, I just like to play it straightforward when I have terrible hands like that. I don't see the value in ISO raising there. 9-7 in the small blind. Uh, can I open that? Yes, I can open that if it's folded around to be, but we cannot open it under the gun, right? We cannot call versus under the gun and definitely versus a 3-bet. So it's very interesting not getting much hands over here, but getting a lot of hands over here. Here I look like I'm a bit of a lag, and here I look like a complete nit. Um, not playing any hands at all because we're not getting anything. Here again, people might be tempted to call here if it was folded around, but again, it's too weak. Um, and then we get a fishy move. Unfortunately, we don't have aces, kings, queens, tens. i probably call him down with something like ace-jack suited. People just do some really fishy things on Bovada zone, especially on the weekends. Ace two suited, I'm going to fold. I would open that up on the cutoff, but I am not opening in middle position. King eight off, is that in my opening range on this new chart? Um, I get three bet versus unknown, and it's a fairly large three bet. So I'm just going to err to the side of caution and fold because we're playing anonymous poker. I don't want to show up against ace king, pocket aces, pocket kings. A king eight off on the button. This is a little too weak for me, so I'm going to fold. King knight off is what I have on the charts, so I'm just following the charts. And another thing too is that when somebody three bets you when you raise under the gun and they are in the blind out of position, you have to give them more credit because you have to assume they have an idea that you're opening a fairly tight range. And here again we just fold, I mean, we don't have any equity there except for a backdoor flush draw and maybe um, a run around straight draw. I didn't even really look at that. I don't even think we had that equity. Let me go ahead and top up. So that's one of the things I have to remember on Bovada is to continue to top up. So just keep folding all this junk. Here we go, we get the ladies, maybe the ladies will win. And I'm going to ISO a, a bit larger. I want to try to get this guy to spaz out and jam. And unfortunately he folds. Um, on this flop texture we don't really have much fold equity at all, so it's just a check being sandwiched between both these opponents. Uh, the turn is no better. It helps out a lot of straight draws, so again, we just check. I have no problem just giving up in a spot like this. Queen Jack off, again. This is probably going to be a fold or a three bet, and I don't know anything about any of these opponents, so my three bets are going to be a bit tighter. So I'm not going to defend versus the button open out of position. And same thing here, the hand's just a bit too weak. Five jack, that's a fold. Ten jack off. We'll see what happens with the action. I will open this in the small blind, but I will not defend versus a button open. Same thing for the jack nine.
So it looks like he's timing out. Any second now, it should just go ahead and fold his hand. Ace Queen. So Ace Queen, this is a great hand here to flat or to three bet. If we had a late position open, um, be an easy three bet. Uh, this is a good spot to squeeze. So I am going to go ahead and squeeze. And the great thing about squeezing that is that it is suited. I do block queen x, I block ace x hands, and I have decent post flop playability. Uh, pocket fours, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the bluff here. And a couple squeezes working back to back, so that's nice. One is a bluff, one as a value. Oh, well, the ace queen's a bit of a value slash bluff. You know, it falls in between. We're not going to play too well against a four bet. So we'll let this video run for about four more minutes, and then we'll go ahead and conclude it. Overall, you know, lost about a buy-in, but you know what? You run bad at the beginning of the session, that's what's going to happen. Got in with the best hand with the pocket 10s, and, you know, that works for me. Again, here, I could squeeze. I'm not going to, well, you know, I may defend. I don't, I think this is a good spot to overcall because I'm not sure this guy's going to squeeze three people, and he's too short of a stack. So I am going to make an exception and overcall here, try to hit my set, um, so when I miss, I'm just going to check. And the reason I overcalled is I think I'm getting decent pot odds there. But if I was just the initial caller, it's just an easy fold or three bet. And on this flop, we just fold. Not a good flop for us to barrel against two opponents, especially short stack. So I'm just going to check. Turns even worse, so at this point we're done with this hand. We're not getting any folds from a King X, a 10X, um, any of those cards. So, just taking a look at my stats. So if it folds around, I will be opening up 8-6 suited on the button. But I am not going to call, especially when somebody only has 21 big blinds behind. It's just a simple fold there. So what you'll notice is that my 3-bet stats are fairly high, 11%, um, 9%. Um, typically, the people on these tables play a tighter range, um, around a 5% 3-bet. I am going to go ahead and fire out here because I do have a backdoor nut flush draw, and I do have the gutter straight draw. Um, I think when he calls here, I think this is a safe spot to check because I, the jack does make some of his straights. 10-queen, um, but if he's on a flush draw, I'm still ahead. Ace-9 suited here, short stack, short stack. I don't think I'm just getting that great in implied odds, but I think I have to call here. And here I'm just going to check down for um, showdown value with Ace-high if he has a busted flush draw. So let's sit out on this hand, and then after this hand I'll sit out. 
I could have let out here, but multi ways, I don't think I have enough pulled equity, so I'm more than happy just to check it down, um, try to hit it on the river. Here, I'm only going to see one more card. Um, and the five doesn't change much, so if people check the flop, I can expect people to check the turn a lot as well. And then when he bets, if he calls, I might call, but I just. I'm not getting the the pot odds to call and the implied odds aren't there as well because he only has 97 cents behind. We have 18% equity, we're getting 25% pot odds, but I have to stack him. And so with that said, it's just a fold without knowing. So we'll go ahead and conclude the video, but before I quit, um, one thing I do want to note is that you'll notice that my 3-bet percentage is a bit higher than typical. And that's because I am starting to adopt more of a 3-bet or fold game out of position, especially in the blinds. And I'm looking for a lot of good spots to squeeze as well, especially on zone at 5 and L because people aren't defending that well. They're happy to fold and move on to the next hand. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not overcalling a lot. I rarely called. I found a couple ex exceptions where I, I felt like I was getting really good pot odds and I had to call. Um, but for the most part, I am tightening up my calling game and not calling. Here we played a 24-20 game. Here we played a 15-15, just not getting any hands. This is more, you know, representative probably of the style of play. Probably bring these together, you know. It's just more, uh, it's just your standard tag game. Probably will normalize to something like, um, probably like a 21-18 or something like that. Now, in terms of sea betting, we're not even going to look at that. I just wanted you to take a look at my steal. So, um... For steals, I stole five out of five times here. And for stealing over here, I stole four out of four times. And so what that says is that you need to be stealing a decently wide range. You'll notice that my range is fairly tight. Uh, and I don't think this is 100% truly represented because I did fold some hands. So I don't know why it is 100%. But, you know, I think I have a fairly decent uh, steal rate overall for this session. For three betting... 11% here, 9% here, so we'll just call it 10%. And that's because I'm squeezing and I am throwing in some bluffs with my smaller pocket pairs. And I am, you know, 3-betting, squeezing something like ace-queen suited, ace-jack, stuff like that. That's not going to be a standard 3-bet for a really nitty player. But overall, I think the session went fine. We did get coolered. Um, I'm going to call it coolered. I'm not, I guess not cooler. I guess we just ran bad at the beginning of the session where pocket kings didn't hold up in 3-bet pot versus a uh, jack-7. Um, first hand, flop middle set with pocket knights and, you know, worst card on the turn in the world. And pocket jacks as well having to fold. So, you know, lots of bad cards to start off the session, but that's how it goes. It's only 88 hands plus 66 hands, so what is that? That's like under 150 hands, you know, sample size is just very small. So you don't have to take, you shouldn't take anything from that and just play your A game. And overall, it's going to work out for you. Um, if you have any questions about my ranges or how I played any of these, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please click the button down here in this corner. It says subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. And like I said, I'm going to be publishing more courses. Um, not courses, excuse me, but videos in the future because I've taken a bit of a hiatus from the YouTube channel. And I've been focusing on other areas. But I know I need to get back there and start giving out more videos for people to watch. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. It's been out with microgrinder.com. We'll see you at the next video.